Hello. He's being so loud, and you guys will never be able to hear it because of the, the sound canceling. But he has the biggest purrs right now. Isn't that right, Mender Man? Um, happy Friday, guys. Uh, happy Friday d d again. Well, that's not what I'm trying to say. Hi again to our students, because on Tuesday, HAA students got to hang out with us for a live stream. Uh, if you guys missed that, to all of our students, there should have been a link in your email. There's also a link floating around in our private Facebook group, uh, but that <coughs> recording will be available in Handmade Alpha Academy Module 5 probably sometime this weekend. I just haven't had the chance to stick it in there yet. We right. also had a shut up every week, I swear. It's starting already. Not, Sorry. Don't don't start already. Well, um, don't look at me like that. They he, can all see it. He got the slow blink. I also published a fantastic video on Tuesday that I recommend you all go check out if you need a if you need a refresher on Etsy SEO. Um, every few years, I try to update my video on how to do Etsy SEO, and not a lot has changed since my last video published. So if you watch it and you're like, this feels like the Twilight Zone, I think I've seen this before. It's because you have. Um, the, the video itself hasn't changed much because the strategy hasn't changed much, but how I teach the strategy has changed a little bit. Does that make sense? Um, as the years go on and I talk to you guys and I have these opportunities to work with you um, and I come up with, you know, new little metaphors and things that I feel make hard concepts really stick, I feel like I adapt my own language and evolve my language and I like to refresh some of those old videos, especially since most people search for Etsy SEO in 2024. They see a video from 2022 and they assume that it's not relevant anymore, even when it is. So... Right now, I think that my focus um, over the next few weeks is going to be going through some of my older content, seeing what needs refreshed, and giving a fresh spin to those videos, especially since some of you are newer here and you don't want to go back, you know, three or four years to watch some of these old videos, or maybe you don't know if they're relevant anymore. So I want to make sure that good content is being revived that way it doesn't get lost in the sea of, you know, outdated old YouTube videos, if that makes sense. So, guys, we're going to be critiquing Instagram accounts today. Um, this is something that we haven't done in probably over a year. But I think that it's really important because your Instagram, it has its own algorithm. You have your own SEO that you have to do. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about what will get you traffic on Instagram, um, and, and not only that, but Instagram personally is one of my favorite platforms for running your Etsy shop or, or advertising your Etsy shop. TikTok is my second favorite because unfortunately with Facebook, though it's easy enough to link your Instagram and your Facebook together and have, you know, through your meta business suite, have those posts go out to both locations. Mm -hmm. Instagram, in my opinion, is better because the algorithm is better at showing your content to people who don't already follow you. Does that make sense? But it takes a bit of time to get to that point because with Instagram, unless you're frequently like uploading reels, which get tossed out to the general public, um, you also have to be able to kind of train the algorithm to identify what you want to be known for and who your target audience is and who they should show that content to. It's also why I highly recommend making sure that you have a personal Instagram and a business Instagram. I have one for my personal stuff, and if somebody messages me about business on that one, I just ignore them. That's my personal place. I post pictures of my pets and stuff. And then I have my business Instagram, and that's where I, I, I only talk about Etsy and business and growth and SEO. And the algorithm knows that. So it's more likely to recommend my content to people who frequently search for things like Etsy and, and SEO. So um, with that in mind, what we're going to do today is look at some Instagram accounts that we'll have you submit in the chat, just like we do our Etsy shop critiques. We've got a 15 minute, or I'm sorry, 15 second delay in the chat. So we can hopefully eliminate, you know, spamming. Um, you only need to submit once and we'll tell you exactly what we need here in just a few minutes. But the key thing that I want to identify right when I get to your Instagram account is I want to know what you want to be known for. And if you're optimizing for what you want to be known for, so both your ideal target customers can identify what you're all about. And so Instagram's algorithm can identify 
where they should put you based on the keywords and, and signals that you're sending to them. So that's kind of where we're going to be diagnosing today. Um, even if your Instagram account doesn't get picked, spend time listening to me critiquing the other Instagram accounts because it's through those critiques that you're going to be able to learn the exact same strategies that, you know, would apply to you if I had critiqued your shop or your uh, Instagram. I'm so used to shop critiques that I'll probably say shop multiple times. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about, though. So with that in mind, this is going to work exactly how our Etsy shop critiques do. <laughs> what I need is your Instagram handle. So it's the the your account name with no spaces. You don't need to put the at sign. I need to be able to paste that directly into in, or into Instagram and find that account immediately. So that's what we need. Um, can you go ahead and put go? Am I actually submitting that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah submit yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do that. Oh, Cynthia, you were so fast. But this should be fun. Um. While we are waiting for them, do you want to go ahead and get the screens configured? <laughs> sure. I have literally not said a word on stream yet, so there's that. Oh, do you the want first to first words of the stream? And you guys are welcome for the uh he was he has just been perfectly right here, like getting scratchity scratchities the whole time. He's a good boy. So for those ADHD folks who need something else to focus on, you're welcome. That oh yeah. There's there's always gotta be something to focus on. Something I'm happy. not going to actually address questions until the end of the stream, so we'll go ahead and hold off on those. We'll get you guys shot. Ouch! Docs <laughs> op opened up in a minute. Yeah. Um, uh, questions at the end. Now, also, as we're going through this, this is a good opportunity. Or opportun opportunity. Opportunity. I can't talk today. This is a great opportunity to also sign up for the free 30-day Instagram challenge kit. That's linked down below. If you are not getting the traction on Instagram that you want, it's a great resource because it's going to give you a content schedule to follow to do all of the things that Instagram's algorithm really likes. Um, and it's got a video in there that I recorded last year that talks about the Instagram algorithm a little bit. Obviously, watch that video before you start the challenge. Um, it comes with a content calendar. It comes with ideas. Um, but it has stuff that you can print out and have out on your desk. So that's free. It's down below if you're interested in checking it out. But that will kind of positively reinforce a lot of the stuff that we're talking about here today. Um, I just keep laughing at this comment. I need remedial eggplant lessons. I feel like we all do every once in a while. <laughs> in addition to the normal ones, you know. All right. All right. Are we good? Um. Yeah, but let's go ahead and screen share. Uh. No. Oh, you're doing a randomizer. I wanted to show them my... Um... You can in a minute. Let oh, get, gotcha. Is it Wheel of Names? No, that's definitely not what we want. I don't need all... I forgot that. that you found the random the random picker. We're going to yeah. do it. We're going to do it uh, super God. duper fair. Bing, shut up, Bing. <laughs> if, if, I almost called you Anthony on stream. That's so funny. That's no, not my name. Yeah, that's literally your name. Nobody nobody in, in the real world calls him uh -huh. Mark. The eight Latin names from the last stream are still in here somehow. All right. Quasi. You, okay. You got it? Go ahead and uh, I didn't oh. post any names in there yet, but I'll go ahead and screen share. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, do, do, do. We okay. Go. So we're going to start with my account as a general um, template, I guess you could say, that we're going to kind of use today. Um, just please keep in mind that I'm officially licensed by all of the authors that we sell merch for. I've got a video on my channel that talks about official licensing if you're interested in that. No, you cannot make book-themed merchandise without an official license. You will get in trouble. I mean, you literally can, but I wouldn't. Well, yeah, if you, if you want to get in trouble. And, yeah. But um, let's go ahead and talk about the areas of your profile. So... You have your actual, you know, your handle. So this is the part that comes after Instagram.com slash. So this is our handle, books and cold brews, right? And then you have your tagline here. So this is the bold portion, a shop of books and cold brews. They also call this your nameplate. Um then we have what we want to be known for. So this is your bio. You can get some good keywords in here and you can get some good keywords in here. Both of these areas are keyword optimizable. So I've got books. That is 
what we're all about. We make merch themed around popular fantasy books. We've got bookish merch. That's my main keyword that I want to be known for. So I make sure that I always use the term bookish uh, and bookish merch. And then obviously we have our um, share and save program link linked. And then when you scroll down my account, you don't see my my dinner, you don't see my pets. What you see is a collection of our products and little moments that are relevant to my niche. So this is when I just bought Sarah Maz's uh, latest Crescent City book. I was, you know, taking the picture in the bookstore. Here's a picture at me of uh, one of the tote bags that we just released, and we're, we were at the hospital, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's Mark reading some smut. So, <laughs> so we create things that are relevant. The uh, What are you currently reading? I am asking my audience to engage, which looks like we got three comments on that. Some of those might be from me. We don't get a lot of engagement yet. Um, this is a quote from one of the books that we are licensed by, but you guys, you guys get the point. And you can kind of see I've mixed in a little bit of AI to generate just a couple of these where I've put in, you know, like a, a black filter over top so that it's dark. Um, this is actually the only time that I use AI art is when I'm creating, mm -hmm. when I'm creating these, because I'm, you know, when I'm dishing out content and scheduling content out for months at a time, I'm just like, bop, 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 bop. is he being naughty? Yes. Of course he is. He's all hung. I can't even get him without moving all my stuff. So he gets back. Like, Let me get down here and lay on top of all the cables you can't get unplugged. All right. So, um, and let me go ahead and click one of these. I keyword optimize my captions as well. So this is a quote from one of the books. However, I have character names. I have the book title. I have, let's see. Ch -ch -ch the newest book title that just came out. Um, I usually also try to get the author's name in there. Um, well, it's in some of them, but you guys, you guys get the picture. So keyword optimization, it's not just an Etsy thing. In fact, keywords are significantly more important for Instagram than your hashtags are. Hashtags used to hold that weight, but, and they used to say, you know, make sure you have all 30 hashtags filled out. That's not really best practice anymore. Five to seven is plenty. I've experimented with more. Sometimes you'll see me experiment with more than that, but I really don't see much of a difference either way. This account doesn't have as much engagement as some of my other accounts. For example, um, our alpha account account if we pop over. Take your sweet time there, Instagram. And I look at some of these posts. Um, I get significantly more engagement on these. But with that in mind, depending on your niche, you're going to see different levels of growth um, and, and speed of growth. Because it's just like Etsy, right? You've got to have a niche. You have to have a defined interest. And that interest has to call to a very specific type of person who may or may not be spending time on, on Instagram. So, um, you know, if, if you have, for example, competitors you can look at, like direct competitors, that's the best way to learn because you know that their audience is the same as yours, right? You know that the demand is there when you can look at what they're doing. It's just kind of being able to balance that use of good keywords and good content in order to both... Um, keep that audience engaged, but also grow and attract new members of that audience. So um, I'm good if you're ready to pick pick somebody. Pick, pick. Pick, 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 pick somebody. Trying to look through these because you can see like the difference between what things you edit on this monitor down here and up there because you're so much more yellow when you edit those pictures down here. Oh, yeah. We need to get you a better monitor for the stairs. Let's do this thing. Sorry, I'm not talking much. I'm starting to actually feel like physically ill. I need to eat. Is that it? I do. Yeah. We'll go. We'll we'll get some lunch right after. Well, I can't because I got to go to Taylor's. Nope. Go pick up my kid. Our kid. I say that like she's only mine. Our kid. Our, she's, she's half of both of us. I don't know which half, but she is half of both of us. I think that she's got... She's got your sense of humor and my sass. The, the problem with this is I don't know what because hardly anybody's using the at sign, so I'm just going to assume. These are usernames. There, there you go. All right. And if you can't find it there, you can search it. Yeah, go to the search bar. 
uh, left. There you go. There you go. Okay. Okay. Are we good? Yep. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Can you clear this? This has been here the whole time you've been talking. Sorry. It's all good. Let's boogie. All right. The fun auntie. Do you say auntie or auntie? I, I say aunt if I'm referring to the person, and I say auntie if I'm referring to aunt, auntie with the I-E. What do you say? Do you say aunt or aunt? You say aunt. Varies. You say your aunt, Tammy. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So, um, right away, I have no idea what you want to be known for. Um, make sure that when possible, you've already got your business name here, the fun auntie shop. I would try to get some keywords in here because your business name does not tell me what you do. Um, and fun is a bit broad of a keyword. Could you add maybe an emoji here and then like a sh very short phrase that defines your niche a little bit or some of the, um, you know, things you want to be known for? Um, I, that would be my recommendation. Or add like a pipe if you want it to look kind of clean. You know, when I think of fun, I think of like bright colors. So if you could just add in maybe, like I said, like an emoji to break it up a little bit might help you with your keyword optimization um, because you do have stickers and stationery for geeky bush or bookish coffee addicts. That's awesome. Um, so you've got good keywords here, but I would just try, try, play around with it and see if you can get, you know, one or two keywords um, in here, especially leaning into the geeky bookish portion. So you've got um, your link in your bio. That's perfect. Okay. Um, so aside from the wood being a little bit different, these photos feel very inauthentic isn't the word I'm looking for. They look kind of, I don't know, they look like mock-ups, um, and I don't know if they are because I do see changes in the wood, but I would try to change up your angles. This there, There's just not a lot going on. Um, if possible, maybe try to add in some little props and things that might make these look a little bit more personal. If these are mock-ups and you're using something like Canva, um, maybe add some little coffee beans down here. Uh, have a little coffee cup in the corner to match this one. Uh, have, you know, a D20 laying off to the side. I think, you said they're not mock-ups. Yeah, I could, I didn't think that they were because I can see the wood. But I wouldn't aim for the exact same angle. Um, then you have more flexibility to move your camera around if they're not mock-ups. On Etsy, it's no big deal. Um, but I do like to see those variants, you know. It makes it feel a little bit more human. And because I couldn't tell that they weren't mock-ups. Yeah, a little bit less like you're being sold to. Yeah, yeah. Make it feel natural, you know? It, this isn't how most people take a natural photo, so make it fun. Uh, looks like you've got a display set up somewhere. That's cool. That's a little bit of that personal incorporated in. Love this. Overall, everything looks really, really cute. You've got stickers. You've got some reels. I would love to see more reels. One thing I will say is that I am kind of craving a uniform style from you. Um, you have a lot of cute stuff, but your brand isn't really shining through. I'm seeing this kind of dark blue color up here, and I love that color. I'm seeing some kind of teal pumpkins in this one. Um, I guess I'm seeing a little bit of that teal, but it's not very obvious. You know what I mean? I had to actually look for it. Um, it took a conscious effort. So you've got a great branding color. She said, I just got some backdrops from Replica Surfaces, so I'm planning to have some fun this weekend. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, that'll be cool. Yeah, and if you've got any of those little blue props, like those teal props that you have, uh, maybe try to incorporate those in as well so that you can try to pull some of those branding colors more subtly into the mix. Overall, your photos are great, though. Your designs are super cute. I, I'm just craving more of your brand. You know, I, I want to... If I was scrolling through Instagram and I stumbled across, for example, um, like the bookish box, if I stumble across one of their photos, 
I know it's the bookish box because I can identify their brand without even seeing who posted it. Um, for my alpha related content, most of you guys can see that kind of yellowish color that I use for everything and you know it's alpha related content because I have a very specific style to my, my brand. If you can pull all that together and create that, and it doesn't need to be a color consistency. It could be a specific filter. It could be just a specific aesthetic. Just tr you've got to try to figure out what your thing is. And it takes a little bit of time. Um, even over at Books and Cold Brews right now, we're still kind of experimenting with the aesthetic, but I think we're beginning to pull it together. The aesthetic isn't a specific color. It's just kind of a... It's kind of a theme. There's like an underlying tone and it's not perfect and I'm working towards it. In fact, I dare say that the aesthetic that I have over on the Alpha account is significantly more polished. So that just kind of goes to show that it can take a bit of time to actually achieve that aesthetic. But little tweaks, little little incremental changes here and there um, over time will make a big difference. Not yet. So next thing I want to glance at is your uh, captions. Let's see. I don't see a lot wrong with it. I'm trying to find keywords. Card. Quirky. Funny. Quirky, tech funny, savvy. unique. Tech savvy. Okay. Okay, this one obviously is more of a personal one. Um, Question. What do you coffee? thim? We thim, we thumb, we thank. Coffee. Stickers, hilarious stickers, coffee related, mm. books, cozy. Okay. I'm getting I'm getting some I'm getting some good keywords. I would um <clears throat> I would try to find one keyword that you try to repeat in every caption. Um so maybe like your geeky term and make sure that it's a term that you've also optimized up here. We want to make all those little connection points with the algorithm. Mine is bookish. I try to put bookish in every caption. I don't always accomplish it, but I make an effort. So maybe if bookish is the term, it doesn't seem though, because not everything is book bookish, but geeky. I think geeky would be a great term for you. It's because I'm not talking very loud. Oh, what? I don't... Um, he's, uh, his, the steroidal injections that he got a few, uh, what last? No, November? November. Middle of December. Middle of December. They're finally starting to wear off. So he's starting to starting to get his aches back. Yeah. A little sleepy. There you go. You got it. Cool. All right. I will be right back. All right. Wow. Super pretty. Um, Let's see. I love that. Call me cat. That is so user friendly because I was just about to say I am going to mispronounce your name, but you know what? I'm going to take your advice and I'm just going to call you cat. Cat, this is beautiful. Um watercolor artist, creative small business. Perfect. Um I love that. Let's see. Taiwanese American an artist at heart. You've got lots of good keywords in here. That's fantastic. Looks like you've got a decent following as well. 1,900 fans. That's that's great. Um, let's take a peek. Yeah, the, these are really really nice. I'm not. I know I'm not critiquing products right now. I'm just critiquing um, overall accounts. But no, your account looks so nice. I would love to get to know you a little bit more. Um, if you're comfortable with it. Um, even if it's just showing your workspace or showing your brushes or showing your, um, you know, your desk might be a way to bring yourself to life a little bit, um, doing some like meet the artist type things. And you don't even have to show your face. You could just show your hands, you know, painting. You could show, like I said, your workspace is, is another idea, a picture of a pet, um, but things that kind of tie together. Overall, though, it's it's very very nice. I would I do love getting to know the artists that I follow when they give those little bit of tidbits. You know what I mean. And if you don't show your face, hey, that just adds one more layer of mystery to it, right? Your reels look good. Do you do maybe like time lapses? Oh, that's awesome. I would love to see you do. Um, if you don't already, I would love to see some time lapse, which you can do very easily with. Um, Cap cut. Another thing, uh, just a little tip. 
for future reels since, you know, your reels have pretty good views. This one has a lot. Um, I would try to start experimenting with some hooks. Uh, for example, start an Instagram reel at, right when it starts playing, adding text like, wait until you see the end. I know that that sounds cliche and we get sick of seeing those TikTok videos that are like, you wouldn't believe what she does next. And then she doesn't actually do anything entertaining. There's a reason that people use those, those um, you know, silly little captions on their videos. It's because they work. And it might be interesting to see, um, you know, what they do for you. But this one has a lot of views. That's awesome. No, I really like these. And then... You could probably get some more keywords in here, I dare say. I would love to see, you know, you've got watercolor illustration, so. <clears throat> illustration tips. That's what he said. I want a cat influencer. Watercolor then look up, he tips. has his pickle on Instagram. Oh yeah, he has his pickle. I love He has it. his pickle. But overall, Spoiler very. Alert. Overall, very, very nice. Um, I don't have a lot of critiques aside from, you know, giving those little um, glimpses of your humanity. I know that sounds weird, but it, a lot of times people, they forget that artists are also people. You know, they see the art and they see the pretty thing, but then they forget, oh, there's a person also involved. And adding that person into the equation, it almost makes your art a little bit more complex. Um I have so many really awesome artists that I follow, and they'll do a reveal. And for example, um, does anybody follow Wolf Skull Jack? Wolf Skull Jack, everybody thinks that Wolf Skull Jack is a dude because the art is very like aggressive. It's like super duper gory with wolves and things. And um, every once in a while, she'll do like a face reveal, and she's like, surprise, I'm a girl. <laughs> so, you know, just fun little layers of complexity that get your audience super interested. All right, ready? Yeah, let's do it. Cat said, little did you know I'm three cats stacked in a trench coat. Me too. <laughs> Me too. That's perfect. All right, let's see. Timeless boho chic. So again, um... I wouldn't put your name as your tagline. I know that on Instagram, when you click edit bio, it says name. It's, I know it says name. It's not really, I mean, unless it's an, a personal account, it's more of a place to get in those keywords and let people know what you're all about. So I would try to focus on some of those terms that really define what you do. Um, we can customize all our designs, nursery, mugs, prints, blankets, home mugs, prints, or posters, prints, apparel, we ship world. So you're really trying to sell to me here. Um, and I know that this sounds really weird, especially when we talk about using your Instagram for marketing, but these are things that I would put on your <laughs> website or Etsy shop or wherever you sell, as opposed to making it a key point in your Instagram. Because we have to remember, Instagram is a social platform, social media. Um, for example, the last account, watching her paint, her artwork, um, cat, the three cats in a trench, or stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. <laughs> we, you know, I felt connected to her as a person because she told me her heritage. Um, she kind of, you know, poked fun at the fact that little old American me probably wouldn't be able to pronounce her name correctly. Um, <clears throat> and then she posted some videos of herself painting and I felt like I was supporting a person. This very much feels like the second I get here to the cocktail party, uh, an MLM lady walks up to me and tries to sell to me. Give me a little bit of you as not just the business, but the business owner as well. Um, tell me what you want to be known for, but other than the words customized nursery home apparel, you haven't told me who your niche is, who your target audience is, what kind of nursery, what kind of home, what kind of apparel, who who is your ideal target audience. You have nothing in here that directs to a type of person, which is what Instagram is going to use to help to match you with the type of people who are more likely to buy what you're selling. Um, Let's take a peek. This is a very pretty picture. And this is a very pretty picture. 
this is so harsh in comparison. This looks like a tech website. This looks like I'm buying a graphics card or, you know, a new video game. Um, this has no connection to your brand or branding. Um, I think that when you're using photos like these, and I don't know if they're photographs or mock-ups, they, they appear to be mock-ups. There's a softness and a femininity, and it, it feels really um, warm and cozy. But these posts kind of just feel, again, salesy and not warm. And um, I would really try to focus on these images that display your products in natural settings without the need for all of the text and the logos. It's just too much. Um, even I know this is a reel, but this reel cover on its own, removing the text, removing the giant logo, just having the plate, that would be a great photo, even if it is a mock-up. Um, but then when we start getting into all these with all the options, it's it's. I feel like I'm looking at a catalog, and your Instagram account isn't a catalog. It's not. It's not a paper catalog that you get in the mail. It's a place to connect with real humans. Alley Cat, refresh the page. Um, so just try to, um, try to really narrow down on those natural settings that make your product stand out, even if you are having to utilize the mock-ups. Um, this one's kind of strange to me. This is like a floor with a wall behind it, and this plate is giant, but then there's a shadow that's shining on the, it makes it look like a giant plate in a room. You know what I mean? Whereas these settings, you know, a nice place setting, this is something relatable. I understand this. You know what I mean? It Heavy emphasis on the plates. I would also try to sprinkle in some of these items. If you sell these as well, I had... I was under the impression that these plates were all you sold. Um, give me a good mixture, even if you're excited about the, a new line. Still revive some of those old things and advertise them. This is another good picture. It's a mock-up, yeah, but... Yeah, it's pretty fire. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice, natural setting. Um, same mm. with this one. This is beautiful. I love this. Blanket size chart. This goes in a listing. This isn't, an, this isn't really an Instagram post. Um... This, I can tell, was recently recycled. So um, I, if I scroll up just a little bit, I'll come across this again, you know. It's just these little tweaks that are going to bring your brand together. Remember, you're showcasing your product. They'll learn about blanket sizes when they get to your shop. They'll learn about the options. They'll learn about your pricing when they get to, the, to your shop. They'll learn about customizations when they get to your shop. That's information that you can also put in your captions. Um rather than, you know, putting them right on the photos. So use those captions to your advantage because you can likely get good keywords in there. So love the use of emojis. Embrace the whimsical charm of cottage Cora with our party decorations. Perfect for bachelorette parties, baby showers, weddings, and more. Again, you're selling to me. You're selling. You're pitching. You're, you're the car salesman right now. You're giving me a price. You don't need to say all this. Create the intrigue so that people go to your shop of their own accord to find out how much your products are. Um, and another thing, this isn't a link. You can't link on Instagram. You can't say shop now and give them a link. You need to make sure that you are adding, um, you know, click the link in my bio. Um, looks like you've got a couple photos here. The, this could make a, a post on its own. This is a beautiful mock-up. See it feel see these are this is like an Etsy listing. You see what I mean? You're you're kind of taking whoop, you're kind of taking an your Etsy listings and just popping them right into Instagram. Um which is very likely why you're not getting a whole lot of engagement because it's like you've shown up to the cocktail party and you know you're pitching your stuff. Um so really focus on getting social. That's that's my biggest piece of advice. You know, don't forget the social part of social media. It's not marketing media. Um don't just try to replicate your your Etsy shop onto social otherwise it's going to come off disingenuous to your audience. All right, are we good? I am good. What time are you wanting to cut? Um 1 Sure. That way we can get to some uh questions yeah because i want to be able to especially since this is a topic we don't cover very often okay i feel like these loaded probably no i think she's got them solids oh okay got it go 
away. I'm just going to show the notifications so they'll go away. That's fine. Okay. All right, let's do it. All right, a pinch of salt. Awesome. Let's see. <clears throat> um, a pinch of salt, STL-based. I don't know what that means. Um, could you get some keywords in here? I'm sure you've heard me say it already plenty of times, but some keywords in here and maybe maybe a little emoji, you know, just a little pop of color. <laughs> um, DIY home decor and subscription boxes. Okay. Uh, laser cut wood project. Perfect. That sounds great. Love your highlights. I like how they're all pretty and colorful. You could probably do some refreshing on these. You have a lot of old highlights. Um, I would periodically go through and clean these up a little bit because when I see this many, I'm not interested in looking at any of them. So maybe go in and do a little bit of refreshing. Super cute. Though. Stereo lithography. Very cute. Oh, okay. the the yeah. STL. Assuming it, she's not meaning something else. Oh, okay. These are very nice photos. Um, this is exactly what I mean by being personal, showing who you are, but still staying on brand. Very natural photos, photos that are connecting me to you as the crafter. Um, I don't feel like I'm being overly sold to. I'm seeing supplies on the table. And I know it's hard when you're print on demand. Um, I know that some of you are like, I'm POD. I can't show my supplies. So but Somebody said it could also mean Seattle-based oh. or St. Louis. See, but if you typed STL-based into Google, it gives you stereolithography, which is a type of 3D printing. Uh, so, so I don't know. Regardless, um, you know, th those confusions are valid and show what your average visitor might also ask themselves. So now, now you've got that feedback from the general public who doesn't know what it means. Um, but with that in mind, like I said, for POD folks, I know that you guys can't show your supplies, but I'm a POD shop. You can go right to Books and Cold Brews and, and take a peek at at my account. Um, I order samples. I try to show the the art that we're using. I try to add quotes from the books that we're licensed by. Um, this is a strange one. <laughs> um, okay, sure. <laughs> I mean, sea monkeys, that's fine. Let's see, you have very nice photos though. I love these. There's a couple things in here that are a little odd. Um, I I feel like this section in particular, you have a lot of weird things all bunched together. Um, I, I do this too, where I'll look at my profile as a whole and I'll be like, these photos together in this combination, the way that they're bunched, it kind of breaks up my cohesiveness. I do it all the time. And then sometimes I, I you know, remove things to clean it up. But overall, everything looks really, really cute. You've got a nice consistent theme. Even these photos that you've posted, they fit the overall theme and aesthetic of your Dog. shop. Are you a Christina Nicole student? Your photography style yeah, your looks... pictures are pretty fire. Yeah, you, you look like a Christina Nicole student. Ooh, that looks good. And it fits. You've got everything that you sell. It all kind of fits together, so... See, that's why it's one of those things where when you, when you look at somebody's stuff and you say consistent theme, it can be kind of hard to understand what she means with that. And it's, I think it's because it's a specific form of expression that's kind of hard to nail down until you figure out what that is for you. It is. But like once you start to look at someone's Instagram and you can tell that someone has a consistent theme to what they're posting, you can tell that they've got it. There's no real way to like describe what that means. Right. Well, I mean, look at this <clears throat> block right here. Um, all of these are very, very different. We've got a quote. We've got some snowmen. We've got some Valentine's Day. Um, besides the fact that they're all made out of wood, the overall aesthetic of the photos is the same, even mm -hmm. though the backgrounds are a little bit different. Things all the are pictures changing. Are completely different. It looks like that it's got a consistent um, filter to it. And you'll notice people like models and stuff that do pictures mainly of themselves. They manage to do that with something like Lightroom because exactly. they can stick the exact same filter on every picture, no matter the location or the scene. But yeah, you're, oh, you said you're, I'm in your course and haven't gotten to the photography. That's awesome. And I think that if you already, Dang. if you already do this well, you are going to love Christina Nicole's product photography yeah. essentials. You've um, clearly got the brain. For or not it. product ph photography essentials, um, product, uh, the, the boot camp. Darn it. No, yeah. that is, that is it. The product photography. I always get that mixed up with her main, yeah. her big course, but, it's all good. um, if you're doing this well on your own, you are going to rock her her course. Um, again, just make sure you're not putting links in here because you can't click them. And 
it's better to tell people to click the link in bio so they know what to do rather than them seeing this link, realizing they can't click it, and then them being like, ah, screw it, and not trying to buy at all. So, um, you know, link in bio. I would also try to break this up a little bit. It looks like a mouthful. If you could get in some little emojis, um, I know that you know, it's been a while since you posted, but try to get some little emojis and things in there. Doesn't look like you've been active in a while, have you? No, four hours ago. Is this pinned? Is it pinned and I just can't see pins? No. 15 weeks? Four hours. Yeah, so... Yeah, so it's probably pinned and it's just not saying it. Yeah. This one actually looks cute with the little emoji there. You've broken this one up. Can you get some um, hashtags in here? Just a couple, you know, just, you know, Four, five, six. Let's see. I think you could probably get some some more keywords in these as well. Y you can still sound natural while sprinkling in your keywords. But overall, really, really nice. I'm a huge fan of your photos, and you've got a decent follower number. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post go again to so people who weren't here. Yeah, it's pinned. And that's I figured that out very quickly. All right, I put went ahead and posted go. You guys can go ahead and repost them. That way, people who aren't here anymore don't get their stuff picked. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Oh. I don't know why, but I'm starting to get, like, congested. Mm -hmm. Are we getting sick? Are we actually... I don't know. I went up there and scarfed some pizza down because I thought maybe it just wasn't eating enough. I was starting to, like, actually tunnel out. Really? Yeah. I just shoved as much of her pizza in my mouth as I could get. Feel that okay now. sounded inappropriate, and I know it wasn't, but... What? It just sounded inappropriate. Well, then you, maybe just... you and I need to meet later. <laughs> it's it's because I'm a toddler. You got the inappropriateness on the brain. I'm a toddler and I'm tired and I'm getting sick and I hate it. It's because we've all been locked in the house because it's been so cold. 10, 9, 8, 7. Do that in your head. 2, 1. <laughs> Oh, you're still screen sharing. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. That's fine. It's all good. You guys didn't see nothing spicy. I mean, yeah, there literally wasn't anything to see other than the names that were already on the list. But now you know what tool we use if you guys ever need a... Miniwebtool.com slash random dash picker. Yeah, if you guys ever need a random generator. They're really useful if you run, like, um, Instagram giveaways and things. Um if you're having people, you know, like comment on a post to enter, then you can just grab everybody and paste them right in. Makes life super easy. It does. It's made these way easier. That one. Oh, oh. my God. Shut. <laughs> Is it? Could we please? Thank you. Sorry, guys. Because it's you got trying your... to upsell me. Yeah, it's trying to get him to pay for a paid plan. I'm not gonna. Well, we only use this thing, what, once every few months? All right, there you go. Cool. I don't wanna. Okay. Let's do it. <gasps> Westwood Whisk. Westwood Whisk. That's an alliteration. Um, I'm assuming you bake. <laughs> Let's see, Westwood Whisk Bakery, perfect. Four followers, then girl. Let's see, macaroons, cakes, cookies, whisking wonders, and baking dreams. Awesome. So you got great keywords in here. When did you start this account? Let's see, January sixth. Awesome. So you're right at the start. Um. Oh, it's you, Christina. I should I. I always see this picture of you down here. I don't see this photo. So let's take a peek. Um, These look awesome. That's right. You had posted, correct me if I'm wrong, did you not post in the student campus that you experimented with an AI tool that was able to put your... Um, your baked goods into different AI generated environments. That's pretty um, fire. Because that, if that's the case, this looks awesome. This is like one of those super cool uses. Like normally we have, you know, some beef with certain applications for AI. Um, this is one of those cases where it is 
awesome. Um, Unless you did that by hand, which also awesome, even but more awesome. <laughs> let us know. But I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't want to, because holy crap, that looks like a lot of work. Yeah, this looks fantastic. <laughs> um, let's see. Again, get some uh, get some keywords in here. Aside from Valentine's Day, I would try to I would try to really bulk up these descriptions uh, if possible. Um, you got a lot of keywords in here or a lot of uh, hashtags. Remember, three to five. Like if you want to put more, I, I occasionally put more than that. I'll experiment with it. Um, but don't spend too much time thinking about it. Um, the periods to divide out your caption from your hashtags is a bit of an outdated strategy. You can actually just add spaces there. You know, if you want to have that like hip modern Instagram account, I would try to avoid, um, you know, just using those outdated tactics. Let's see, you've got a reel up already. Oh. That looks so this was good. the worst possible shop to pick right now. I know, I'm starving. I love it. Super <laughs> cute. I love how it looks like watercolor. That's awesome. Rogue. Um, Let's see. So the main issue with, because baking reels do really, really well. Like baking videos, people love to watch before and afters. However, the scene starts and it's a lot of this very first shot. Let's wait until it, this shot, and it's a very shaky shot. This is that grabbing moment. That first clip is the grabber. Um, you could add some text that says, you won't believe what she does next. You know, yeah. you won't believe what this cake looks like. I think that what makes me want to scroll on before I see how the cake turns out is how shaky the camera is. It's, it's also a good tactic to have a little quick, like two second long peek of what the final product looks like and then snap to making it. Right, That's right. What the majority of like the super duper popular cooking channels do. They show like a perfect finished dish for like two seconds and then they immediately snap into like, and here's how I did it. Right, <clears> yeah. <throat> Because you, you want to grab them right away, you know? You want to treat the, them. Which I guess the thumbnail, if you're scrolling, I guess, does that. But the thumbnail won't show for those in exactly, feed. Exactly, if you're just scrolling through your feed. This is so fun, though. I love that you're showing the process. It's kind of the moment when, like, you're scrolling through your feed quickly, and then you scroll past something. You see the finished product. It makes someone scroll back to see what they saw. Yeah. Then... Um. But overall, super-duper cute. Like I said, if these are, um, yeah, I, I can kind of see now that I'm really looking. <laughs> but I really got to be looking. Yeah, it's perfect. These are very convincing. This is an awesome use of AI, and it's your actual products just inserted into the setting. So I think it looks absolutely phenomenal, especially for those who don't have, like, a beautiful, ideal table. God knows we don't. We don't even have a dining room table. Um, again, it looks like you're just kind of copying and pasting the same exact caption, though. Isn't this the same one I just read a minute ago? Um, I would try to get some variants in there and um, get me excited. But I definitely see your, your branding colors. I'm starting to to get an idea um, of what your overall theme is. Looks really, really nice. Um, like I said, those reels, though, I think they're going to be your best friend. So I would definitely try to start it either with, like what he said, the finished product or a little bit of text on the screen. Like, you won't believe what it will look like when I'm done. You know, just something something stupid that will get people really. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. Was that your wizard voice? That, no. That, that sounded like a wizard voice is what that sounded it like. It wasn't supposed to be, but I guess it is now. Um, but overall, I'm excited to see where you go, especially since you just started. I cast torsion. <laughs> okay. All right. You're not screen sharing. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not on it today, guys. Sorry. Creational abyss. Let's Love see. It. Mental health and beta jewelry. Awesome. Um, let's see. Making handmade jewelry while advocating for mental health, creating a comfortable experience for shoppers. That's awesome. You've got a message. You've got keywords. You've got a consistent theme. I would love to see some pretty colors up here, but you know, that's just me. I like the pretty colors. However, immediately seeing some pretty colors down here. Um, I really like this. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm more of a in the moment type photo person. However, every once in a while, I'll see someone who stages their photos specifically for Instagram, but they are really good at it. And you do a great job. And when I say staging, for Instagram, I mean like, you know, having the kind of unnatural backgrounds as opposed to the natural ones. But because your brand is very defined, 
I know exactly what your branding colors are. You've done that with your highlights. You've done that in your logo, and you've done it in these first few images. I, I really think that you nailed it. These look so nice. And look. Compared, Pretty decent engagement. Right. Compared to some of the other accounts <laughs> that we visited today, even for only having 854 followers. That's pretty decent engagement. You're getting, yeah, this is this is pretty good engagement. Um, these numbers are great. And you can kind of see it. It looks like maybe the quotes aren't doing as well. That one had 12. Yeah, this one had 12. So they're not too bad. Looky here. Yeah, product stuff definitely gets more. This one with your actual wrist <clears> actually <throat> did better than most of the other ones. This one did really well. I'm trying to see if there's any rhyme or reason. Nope. Huh. Looks like that's just kind of about the standard ratio for engagement for their stuff at the moment. Whoa, look at that. 141 on that reel. I'm going to come back and circle back to that. But wh why? Reels are such wild cards still. Dude, you've got such a high engagement on that reel. Get more reels out. That's a signal from the universe. Let's see. Yeah, thousand, thousand. Yeah. Reels are where it's at. Let's see what what is the overarching theme. Time to package orders doesn't seem to be the text. However, packing an order for autumn seemed to do really, really well. This one, no text. This one didn't do uh well at all this one shows all the beads together let's see this one shows a lineup of products product lineups i've noticed tend to do pretty well this one was more of a humorous one it did okay looks like a workspace restocking sticker sheets how it, okay so see this is a hook how it started because now i want to know how it ended making a bracelet. My new bracelet is out tomorrow. See, people are like, oh, that's a little salesy. So this one has 208. Making a bracelet, though, that tone, people are like, ooh, I want to watch you make a bracelet. Um, when someone says they hate bracelets, I want to know what, what happens when they say they hate bracelets. You do that thing where you rubber band them, you pull the bottom, and you snap, snap them. Restocking ASMR. That's a, that's a cool tagline as well making a Valentine's bracelet. So it looks like people really like to watch you make your bracelets. Um, yeah, it looks like reels seem to be the good formula there. I would definitely keep doing those reels. And make sure you add a call to action at the end. Add something in there about, um, you know, follow me for more. Ooh, good caption. I love seeing nice long captions. This is awesome. And guys, fun fact. Um, if you feel like Instagram is one more thing that you just don't have time for because you're too busy running your business and you want to have big, long captions, ask ChatGPT to generate them. I mean, I know that that sounds silly, but it's... A take them from another place that you're already writing up. Here's my listing description. Write an Instagram post with this. Lots of... Um, see, this one got a lot of good engagement, 26. And it's not about buy this bracelet. That's not what she did. She gave you a list of actionable <laughs> steps um, related to mental health in her niche. So it's not just buy my stuff. It's here's something I happen to make, but there's a greater message connected to my actual caption. Um, and that speaks volumes for the amount of engagement that this post received. Um, again, you don't need those periods there. You can take those out. But you've got, <laughs> you've got one of the lovely promoted on blah, blah, blah. I hate those. Drives me bonkeroo. They're moted on. And are those pinned? 16 weeks, six weeks, 23 so, minutes. Okay, so that's... So that's what, brand new. That's why that one... Got didn't. it. One day. Got it, got it. Okay. I You can't see that they're pinned from here. So overall, very, very nice. I think... You the, don't have to use long captions. That's not the point of that. Oh, yeah. You don't have to. And I already but, closed the thing because we're pretty much at the top. There, so we can go ahead and move on to questions. Oh, okay. Man, I feel like we didn't get through many more. Let's do more of these. Do you, do you guys like these? Should social we... media audits. Maybe yeah. not Instagram in particular, but social media specifically. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know if I feel comfortable doing other accounts because I'm not as good at 
the other ones as I am Instagram. I'll do the OnlyFans ones. The OnlyFans ones? Okay, Mr. Moore can do the OnlyFans I'll critique your OnlyFans, that's fine. Um, I think that if we start doing these, like, maybe as frequently as we do the shop critiques, um, I love these, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, we can do that. All right, we'll start. Maybe we'll do a back to back. When we next time we do a shop critique, we'll do an Instagram critique the following week and we'll do them like every two months rather than once a year, like we're doing right now. What do you guys think? Yeah? Okay, cool, cool. All okay, right. You guys are good to go ahead and get your questions in. Doesn't have to be related to this topic at all. But if you had a question previously that we didn't get to because you submitted it earlier, um, please resubmit it because we won't be able to see it with, you know, as many people that. Yeah, in the pretty chat. much all the comments are gone at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're back. We're already to the point where people were submitting their shops or their uh, Instagram accounts. But, yeah, there wasn't. I can't probably go right that's below right. that. That's okay. <laughs> and they can they can be Instagram related as well or Etsy yeah. related. Mm. Burr, go ahead and say what you're going to say. Oh, I was, I was just going to let everybody know that Etsy is waiving transaction fees on your share and save links until February 15th. I think that they're probably doing this to bring overall awareness to Etsy during the Super Bowl. Um, with the Super Bowl commercial coming out and um, everybody promoting with their share and save links, the timing just kind of lines up. I think Etsy's really trying to take what would normally be Etsy's slowest season, which is the point after you know, Valentine's Day or in, in February when it's too late to shop for Valentine's Day. This is normally a season when mm -hmm. we don't see traffic. You know, Etsy's very slow around this time of year because people have already shopped for Christmas and they're done shopping for Valentine's Day. So with that in mind, um, I think Etsy's trying to give everybody a little boost. You know, they're trying to help everybody and, and encourage everybody to share their share and save links so that they can hopefully um, see more traffic. So with that in mind, uh, save a little bit of money. Start promoting those share and save links. That, that, that commercial that they made. I, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, Somebody it, needs to tell them that high budget doesn't always mean good. Yeah. I, they're, both of their commercials. The cake. It was very, um, I like, let's make the millennials like this. That's what it felt like to it, me. It's a people cake. That one too. <laughs> that, that was awful. That was the, awful. the new one for the Super Bowl was okay, but the, the it's a people. That was a genuinely terrible commercial, Etsy. It's a people cake. That was awful. Uh, uh, some people might have thought that was funny, but uh, that just doesn't doesn't touch my sense of humor at all. Even our daughter, she's, she's she was a, like. She's like, what is this? <laughs> All right. Uh, for Lincoln Bio, do most link to the shop page and expect people to go find the thing they wanted, or is there a different approach? Um, that's link kind of the approach. Yeah, that's the only approach, um, unfortunately. If you're linking on other platforms, so for example, I use the Metrical app to schedule out all of my social media content. I used to use the Meta Business Suite for Facebook and Instagram, but now I just keep it all on Metrical because I also schedule to Pinterest and LinkedIn. Um, so when I am scheduling out for my Etsy shop specifically, I always go into Metrical and change the caption slightly. If it is going to Facebook and Instagram, for example, and I'm showing a specific product in the image in the Facebook version, which you guys can do right from your Meta Business Suite, as long as your Instagram and Facebook are connected, you can alter the captions. Um, for the Facebook one, I will put the share and save link for the specific product. But then when I add the caption for the Instagram version, I will sub out that link and I will put, um, click the link in my bio. Because, um, you know, hopefully if it's a recently advertised item, it'll be higher up in your shop or um, this is where those shop sections, you know, over on the left-hand side of your storefront come into play, making sure that those are set up in a very, very buyer-friendly way. So if you're advertising earrings, for example, even if those earrings are like on page three of your shop, there's a category or a section for earrings. That way the person can find the earrings that they're looking for. It's it's kind of a pain in the butt, but you can't link to a specific product. Uh, about 1K following. Okay. What is high engagement for a post for a reel? I see 25 is a high number, not likely going viral here. It's that's entirely a subjective thing. Yeah. Um, From industry to industry, audience to audience, what age your user base is. I mean, there are so many factors that play into that. Um, always aim for doing better <laughs> than you did yesterday. Remember, growth yeah. growth needs to be incremental. Um, and you want to really focus on your specific growth patterns and not how... Um, not what other people like see as growth. So if you gain one new follower a week, awesome. Like that means that you are doing better than you did yesterday. Um, 
for me, if I'm looking at a brand new account and I'm seeing, you know, a couple people engaging with that brand new account, hey, that's awesome. You know, that that means that that person is new and they are getting a little bit of attention. If I see that you have 12,000 followers and nobody's engaging with your content, that tells me that either the content isn't good or, um, you know, you are just all over the place and you're so scattered that your audience doesn't really feel a connection to you. Uh, when we share from the Etsy seller app, is it considered a share and save link? Um, It will say, um, what is the order of the link? Shopname.etsy.com. I can't. I can't remember. There's a very specific link for the share and save. If anyone wants to elaborate for us, I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, Jessica, I'm actually not sure. Um, what What I would recommend doing is share it and then just check the link from where it's been shared from and um, see if it matches up with your share and save link because offhand, I'm not sure. I'm assuming it does. Uh, how do we state what our ideal people are? How do we phrase it? Like I sell subtle pride products and mental health. That There you go. You just said it. You just said it. Subtle That's pride that. products and mental health. Those Those sound like keywords to me. That sounds like your audience. When I post a reel, I make a cover and it looks good under the reel tab, which is rectangle, but then it doesn't look good under the post tab, which is square. How do you make it work for both? Um, so when you add a cover, you have the option to adjust the cover uh, when you select it. So I personally upload my own thumbnails, which you can add from your camera roll if you want to design and style a cover for your Instagram reels. <clears throat> you also have the option to select straight from the video. But there's another layer after you, you know, either upload your image for your cover or you've selected it from the video and you've, you know, slid it along the timeline of the video and selected where you want it to stop and display. You also have a little button above where it shows, you know, the the picture where you've edited the cover. You have the option to adjust it for your actual feed and then you will be able to see what will show in that square. If you can't get a good shot in that square, then you might want to just upload a photo of, for example, a product. If you're if you're doing a reel of a product, I would just try to snap a photo, making sure that you have plenty of space around it. That way you can make sure that it fits both in that, you know, cover dimension as well as that square format that will show on your profile. So we got a couple of answers. Somebody said, yes, it is the share and save link. Okay. Lady Vanta Black said marketing, share and save. Cynthia said the share and save link is on your homepage in the big blue box. Yes, that it, it it's there as well. But each listing also has a uh, individual share and save link. Uh, unrelated question. That's fine. Doesn't sure. really matter. Uh, I have a listing with a good quality score. However, I want to change the. I'm assuming I'm at POD provider. Can I swap the SKU out if it is the exact same product, just a different printer? Yeah, there, I'm there's, sure it should be fine. Yeah, there's no, uh, there's that's not going to have any impact. Uh, the SKU won't have an impact. Um, when we say, you know, be, be wary of um, touching those bestsellers, we mean those points of, you know, keyword optimization. So we wouldn't want to see you remove a good keyword that you were being found for because that would be like cutting off the highway that's leading to your business or to your listings, right? So uh, tags, titles, and attributes can, you know, they play a small part as well. Um, and descriptions play a very small part. Uh, for the gift mode for our shops, Etsy has suggested to add quote unquote gifts to our tags and gift category. I'm worried that it will tank my listings. What say you? Well, for one, don't change anything that's working. Yeah. Here, period. For two, there's a couple different ways to look at this. For one, everyone who doesn't know better is going to do exactly what you just said. So Etsy is about to be absolutely spammed with people putting gift in their tags. So you're going to be competing against all of the other probably couple hundred million people. <laughs> you know. Not really. No, You're going to be competing with a lot of different people. Yeah. A um, couple hundred thousand is what I meant to say. Gift keywords. Throw them in when you have new listings to upload. Don't go back and change all your past listings. Um, if there are items that aren't selling, change them here and there. But you never want to make big changes to your entire shop in there, bulk. There's also the ability to, now we know descriptions are probably going to be a huge part of the weight on this. So putting something about who the gift might be for in your description is a possibility. They also tell you to make a shop section specifically for the products that you think are giftable. Like there are different ways that you can make giftable things within your Etsy shop without having to change the title or the tags. Yeah. So. 
<clears throat> oh. There's links in HA in for HA. What? There's linked. LinkedIn. There's oh, there's LinkedIn. Um, there is an alpha LinkedIn. Uh, yes. it's Starla Moore. <laughs> I am on LinkedIn. If you hate social media, I'm on all of them. And if you hate the the social social ones, I'm on LinkedIn as well. There's a handmade alpha account for everything. If it exists, I'm probably on it. We, we've got a Threads account. Not very active on that one. Can you elaborate on permission marketing and the minimum viable audience theory? I have no so, idea what any of that is. Permission marketing is basically a fancy way to say email list sign up without email list sign up. So it's basically okay. like it's opt-in marketing. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't really see that. I don't know enough about it to know why it's even applicable to Etsy because people don't have to be opted in to be advertised to on Etsy. Um, um, well, they kind of, well, no, they not, don't. You join Etsy and you're marketed too. That's, yeah. I thought you meant like for, for the only way no, that it, that I'm talking would... about the actual platform is right. And right. then obviously for email lists, you don't have a choice. Yeah. We, neither of us know enough about the specifics on it. They're newer things by who was, she said, put the author in here. I forget what his name is. Seth Godkin. Couldn't tell you. There's a million different theories. There's probably different names for it that somebody else has also written about. I, I couldn't tell you in the specific context of your wording. Uh, I'm confused about using LinkedIn. I thought it was just a place to post your resume and make contacts with well, job contacts. Amy, I'm a coach. LinkedIn makes sense for me. I don't have a LinkedIn for my Etsy shop. Doesn't make a lot of sense for Etsy. Um, uh, not unless maybe you're trying to do like bulk orders or something like, wholesale. you know what I mean? Wholesale, I guess, if you're trying to get them with wholesalers. Yeah, LinkedIn doesn't make sense for the average no. Etsy seller, depending on, you know, what you're, if you sell like, you know, some type of business services, it's a little bit different, but I'm a coach. So LinkedIn makes perfect sense for me because I'm able to find, you know, other businesses who need my help. What about using links to the Etsy store, Linktree, et cetera? Good idea, question mark. How should they be used? Text in the description and the reels as a stamp, not at all. Links to the Etsy. Okay, so links to the Etsy store and Linktree won't show anywhere. It won't show in the description. It won't show in reels as a stamp. It won't show. I mean, you can use the link. Um, you can use the link sticker in your stories, which is like the only other place that you can add a link, unfortunately. Links in your stories with the link sticker work. Um, you can also change the text that used to just show the link, but now you can put yeah. like click here or shop here. Um, and I love using those. It's It makes things so much easier. You used to have to have like so many followers, what, 10,000 or something like that to be able to link in your, in your stories. Oh my God. Um, but having Linktree, yeah, just in all the posts that you can't add a link sticker directly to, which is going to be your reels and your in your static posts that, you know, like your photos and your feed, saying link in bio is the only real option yeah. um, unless you have connected to Instagram shop. You know, they're having that little shop feature. I can't even begin to tell you how to set that up. I, I've heard so many mixed signals from people talking about how freaking hard it is. So I've just never really looked into it. Yeah, and you're um, not really supposed to say link in bio anymore anyway. Um, I, the, I, the dude that runs Instagram said that it was a good way to tank your viewership. Adam, he, he specifically said not to do that. Adam, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, but definitely put the link tree in your bio if you have mm -hmm. multiple links that you want them to. If you've only got your Etsy shop, yeah. then put that there. But if you've got multiple places, then obviously, yeah. you know, that link tree is an option. Or um, Instagram, I think, lets you put multiple links yeah. now. Because, I mean, really, when you post a link on an Instagram post, you're asking people to do several things. For one, assuming they can even see the whole thing, they have to expand the description down to be able to see the full link. And then they have to hold their finger on the link, assuming that's even going to work it, on their yeah. specific device. And then they're going to either have to copy it, or if they have a phone that's newer enough that it'll actually pop up the web search thing, then they have to web search it and then they have to click the link in your link tree. Like it, it's just not an effective way to get people over to your shop as much as that sucks. Let's see. If we can't say link in bio, what can we say? Now I'll be honest. I say link in bio all the time. And I see all of the companies that I follow on Instagram say link in bio still, so. I haven't seen any negative impact on my account personally. That you know of. On the Handmade Alphas? No, my engagement is faboo. It is faboo. Aw it is awesome. Um, I have had no issues over there, but link in bio. Um, 
find the shop find my shop at the top of my profile shop shop is in my the link to the shop is in my bio yeah the link Break it up the link to my shop is in my instagram bio i don't think that it's probably the exact like phrase if he said that link in bio yes putting link in bio tanks posts people know to check bio right Instead of, yeah, people that are of the age group that knows that that's a standard thing, that anyone above that's that age true. group absolutely doesn't know to check the link in the bio. Yeah. Like people around our age, because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, instead of saying link in bio, can I say check out the, we already kind of went over yeah. this. We're just going to skip that. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, I haven't personally had any issues with it, though. That's very odd. I'm going to experiment. Let me experiment with it a little bit. Let us cook. Uh, what are your thoughts on offering a Bella canvas and a comfort color shirt in the same listing as long as we're clear which picture is what? As a consumer, I don't know what the difference between those two brands are, and I'm expecting you as the professional and as the business owner to sell me whatever is better. So if you're giving me two options and they look like t-shirts, I have no idea what the differences are. So you either have to be very specific and outlining why they're different, or I would separate them. Um, because if I ordered... You know, I, I am I am expecting you to tell me what to buy. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't as an average consumer, I wouldn't know the name Bella Canvas. I wouldn't know the name Comfort Colors. I would know things like Hanes and Fruit of the Loom, you know, so um, I would try to make it as easy as possible. Now that Instagram is allowing multiple links in your bio, should we use that or the link tree thingy? I don't have a link tree yet, but I can do it if it's better. I don't think that it's better or worse. I like the way that link, link trees look because you can customize them yeah. and brand them a little bit. There's also the mentality that you're adding an extra step to the process of getting with someone to purchase something. So there's that too. Well, I mean, it's and the, the more same. the more the more click no because you have to click a the the link to the link tree and then click the link in the link tree instead of just clicking a link directly to Etsy. It is literally adding a step in the process. It's yeah. usually not that big of a deal. However, the whole point of like reducing the amount of steps between a person seeing a product Right, but you're and misunderstanding the question. Instagram just released a new uh, an update. I'm not on misunderstanding the question. I'm saying the process of going to link tree. I, I fully right. understand the question. Yeah, it's the same process though. It'll be I the same it. journey if you're using I know. Instagram. I like the way that link trees look. I think that it allows you to kind of toss your branding in there. You know what I mean? You can kind of color, coordinate them, make them look pretty. I'm assuming that we're still not allowed to use the word Instagram. Yes. We, yes. Uh, I should have probably said that at the beginning. The word Instagram. We, yeah, yeah, if you said the word Instagram in any way, shape, or form, it, your message probably got deleted. Yeah, you can't use IG or anything. Yeah. Um I use IN to get illustration commissions for books or other art needs. I don't know what IN is. Or is it Instagram? Because Joy knows that she can't say IG. Uh, for links, though, if it cascades to Facebook, the links work there. So I add a link so it's clickable on Facebook. Should I not? Yeah. The, when That's you're scheduling thing. out that content from your Meta Business Suite, it's going, you have the option to edit them separately. So you'll have the option to um, create, you know, a, almost like a template. Um, and then you select where, you know, those posts are going and which ones you're going to edit. Um, and I will usually go in and just add my link into the Facebook one. You can do that for most schedulers, though. You can do it for later. You can do it for, um, I use Metrical. Uh, can you use an item that you sell in one Etsy shop and a second shop as long as it's grouped with a gift or package set? Or is this an issue with Etsy? Um, I don't know. That's that. You're getting um, into a gray area, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Um, might be a question that you would want to double check with Etsy on. Um, I'm going to say that it sounds okay if it's kind of like in a set together. Um... I mean, I don't, again, that's just me guessing. It's just me completely guessing. So I, I wouldn't want to give you bad advice. How about setting up a many chat and asking people to comment XYZ in the comments to get a DM with the link? I don't know what many chat is. Don't maybe know anything I'm, about it. Maybe I'm old. Um, however, I have offered on Instagram, um, I've done things where I've experimented with the 
the text like comment and I'll DM you with the link. So um, for example, when I have given away like freebies and stuff, you know, on the alpha Instagram, mm -hmm. I've said like, I've got this freebie comment and I'll DM you with the link because it helps my engagement because, yeah. you know, I'm communicating directly through DMs with you guys when you comment and ask for the link. Um, the only downside is that sometimes when you message those people directly, um, a lot of the times you'll go into the, one of their assorted other folders. So if, you know, if you end up going in there, they might not see it right away. Can you talk about calls to action, please? Um, a call to action is just that. You're asking someone to do something. Um, a call to action is your request for someone to follow specific directions that you want them to take. A call to action for, you know, might be shop now, shop here, click here, do this, link in bio. Those are all calls to action. So if you've got a specific question, though, feel free to let me know. But that's that's mm -hmm. essentially what a call to action is. This person said, Bella Canvas is also cheaper than Comfort Colors. I would not put them in the same listing. You know, uh, honestly, Bella Canvas used to be one of my favorites. But if you, you know, look at the... Did we put out that video yet? No, no we haven't. Tuesday. But... Uh, they're not as good as they used to be. And well, it might be the, the specific... 3001. I yeah, we're using the three... Is that the one we're using? Yeah, I think it's, that's what it's called. 3001? The one we got in the most recent POT order was actually bad. Like, I would not sell it. So yeah. I guess it just depends on the kind of Bella Canvas. Well, well, I mean, just like any other brand that you use with your POD, it depends on the quality. Yeah. You both look wonderful, and I hope so far 2024 is treating you well. It's actually been a pretty good year. It We do appreciate it, though, because we both feel sick. So if we look wonderful on our sick days... I'm just exhausted. Yeah. Uh, how would you handle different languages? I would like to use French, but English opens to a broader audience. What do you mean? Like on Etsy? Uh, you don't have to worry about language stuff when it comes to Etsy. You, or Instagram. Or, I mean, yeah, really, Instagram. It's auto-translated for you, unless you mean something specific. Yeah, uh, most most websites translate. So um, what I would re recommend doing is just writing them in the most minimalist version of whichever language you decide to start with. If you're starting in French or if you're starting in English, try to not use slang or lingo that the translation might yep. struggle with. But No if, local dialect stuff. Exactly. So as long as you can kind of keep it as simple as possible, it should translate pretty well. Yeah, Brent and Brenda said, as someone who's worked in the web for a long time, I can say the more clicks it takes someone to get to a destination, the more likely they'll give exactly. up. That's a that's a classic like sales tactics. The longer it takes for someone to get to let's let's say you're you're in a parking lot of a of a of a car sales place. The longer it takes you to get that person into the office to sign those papers, the less likely they are to spend the amount of money you want to spend on that car. That's just how it works. If, you, if you're visiting and showing them 15 other cars, instead of just trying to sell them on the one vehicle they approached when they first came in, you're probably not going to make a sale. However, if you start bragging about how good that one little car is, and then you're able to take them straight into the office and slap a paper in front of them, they're more likely to spend their money, right? It's the same process across the board. Yep. But, and that's also why you don't want to offer too many options, uh, why you don't want to offer 600 colors for exactly. them to choose from, you know? I, I recommend that's reading, classic sales 101 dog i recommend uh checking out the book uh the paradox of choice by barry schwartz it is fantastic and it talks about uh choice overload and how we as a society ha actually have become more unhappy and why um, average americans tend to be more depressed than a lot of countries where freedom is less um, simply because we have too many choices to make in a day and our brains just aren't equipped to make as many choices as we're forced to. And Alfred so. then come back and said Instagram. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to worry about, I mean, unless you're wanting to post your stuff in French, but then I would just keep in mind that if you're posting your stuff in French from a U.S. place, all of your U.S. people are probably going to see that in French. So it's not going to get translated properly. He's French. Um, Oh, if, well, then if he's in France, it shouldn't matter. It should translate. However, if you start getting complaints that people can't read it, then maybe you should, or you could set yourself a VPN to the U.S., pop open a browser you don't use and see if it's translated to English for you. But or ask Instagram, an alpha to do it. Most of the time, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff will translate as long as the person is posting from the location that their language is for. Yeah. Similar to like when you see Spanish people posting in the United States, their posts still show up in Spanish in the U.S. and it's not being translated. It's usually because their location is still in a place where their language would technically be English. Right. So... 
Most of my followers are fellow makers. Uh, all us polymer clay people just follow each other, which is cool. But how do you get followers who are customers? Um, that's a good question, but I really don't have much of an answer for you other than you have to give, do the thing that interests the people who don't already know what you're doing. If they don't know how to do what you do, do the cool thing, do the rare thing, do the hard thing, do the complex thing, and show those processes in Instagram Reels. I mean, I know that that sounds crazy, but Instagram Reels are shown to an audience of people who don't already follow you, but who share an interest with what you're doing. So I dare say that by showing the process of how you create some of your products, mm -hmm. I don't know how to make polymer clay product. I would make a mess. Um, and, but I'm really interested in watching someone who's really good at it do it. I'm not going to try to do it myself, but I'll watch you do it. You know what I mean? So that would be my uh, suggestion. So somebody also asked why they can't say Instagram. Um, we It's a spam term. S spammers, yeah. Yeah. If you put Instagram, we actually had one that... Uh, one video, God, it's probably been three or four years ago now where we had both the word Instagram and scam on the video. And I had to do damage control for almost a month, deleting, God, a, a comment every 10 minutes or so. Like uh, literally hundreds of comments a week I had to delete. And finally it got, did I turn the, did I finally turn the comments on that off? No, we just deleted, we just blocked every single term related yeah. to Instagram. Eventually they, they stopped, I think because we blocked all of the accounts that were linked to that one particular scammer that did that. But there are some words you just can't put in titles on YouTube because somehow they haven't figured out how to stop that stuff yet. Yeah. It's gotten better though. <laughs> right. Our restricted list is very long. Right. We're at a point now where AI can decipher what uh, animals are saying to each other, but we still can't figure out how to stop spam comments on YouTube. Uh, thoughts on if you have two stores and sharing the same account, if they're both printable stores, but different types. Rewriting my comment. Not sure if my last comment went through doing, due to the wording used. Okay, so I think they were talking about the same thing, like um, bundling the products together. They're both printable stores, but different. I mean... I don't have, I mean, yeah. Are you asking if you can have, what? what's the actual question? If you can have two stores? What was Amy C's original comment? Two stores sharing the same account. Two stores sharing the same account? I think listing, same product. We answered it a couple of minutes ago. Using the same product in two different stores, but one store has it in a bundle. No, these are digital. This is a different, completely different oh, okay. question. Sounded um, like the same thing. No, completely different question. Um, sharing the same like the same shop or you're using the same email address it's fine to have two separate stores um i wouldn't if the question is can i put like the pro totally different products for two different niches within one store i typically discourage that but feel free to clarify if i'm misunderstanding your question People want the easiest path. Exactly. Yep. That's actually, you guys can see that in practice when Handmade Alpha Academy opens. Our homepage is absurdly long. Um, the reason for that is because if we remove that length, our inbox is a nightmare. Of questions. Of questions. A lot of people just want to buy immediately, and that's totally fine, which is why I've added, added a button to the top that actually jumps you past all of that stuff, but not to a separate page, because if you do decide that you want that information, you can scroll up immediately. So I'm giving people the ability to immediately click and check out, but I'm also giving people the ability to look at the information if they decide to do so. It's, it's a standard business practice being able to just sell to someone immediately, but some people... A lot of people need a lot of that information. Exactly. And I can't be up until five o'clock in the morning answering emails. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Okay. I think we're almost done here. Okay. Could ShopLink and Profile work better? Is it too close to ShopLink? I don't, guys, I think, I don't think it really matters. <laughs> I, I, it probably doesn't matter that much. Right. This is something that we just heard it for the first time from you guys because I haven't seen a problem with it. I, I, I've heard it for a few months now that he said not to do that. Adam Masari. Uh, if mm -hmm. anybody's got that exact uh, video from him, I mean, I follow him, um, but feel free, because I know he does all his updates and reels where he sits in front of the camera on his little chair and his cute little sweater and chairs. Um, if anybody has that actual link, just tag the Handmade Alpha account 
um, on Instagram. Basically, Botanical said, oh, so it's a self-imposed, not a YouTube thing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I got on the internet, found a list of like a thousand and five words. That Related you to Instagram? No, that you that you don't want people saying in uh. your streams, like every slang word and every language. And then it had a little description of like what it was. And I had to go through and curate. Man, there are some naughty words out there. I tell you what, some words I didn't even know stood for things. Uh, have you heard that you can choose a location like New York, New York to increase reach on reels? Um, no, I had not heard that. I have. I've Thank experimented you. with it and didn't notice any difference. So how did you do it? You don't have a VPN on your phone. No, you can select, you select the location when you're yeah. uploading the and reel. if you're posting from Ohio, it's going to know you're still in Ohio. I haven't attempted to select anywhere other than Ohio. So I don't know. Well, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. This weekend? This weekend, sure. Okay. On, we'll my, put, on my OnlyFans. On your OnlyFans. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll play with it this weekend and let you know. Uh, like a mock location, question mark? I'm not sure. Do you mean like actually in that or using something like a VPN? Because I think it probably would matter where you're actually posting from, right? I'm not sure. Uh, does it make sense to share posts also in stories? I started doing it and adding the link to the post so they can read my captions. Uh, While well, you should learn boundaries, find tips for... Um... Yeah, if you if you don't have anything else going on in your stories, um, I like if you guys notice, like when we do the Friday Bean and when I do uh, my Tuesday videos, I go into Canva and I use their magic resize tool. So, you know, for example, I'll have my my inst or my sorry, YouTube thumbnail and I'll magic resize that YouTube thumbnail for a Instagram portrait size uh, image and for an Instagram story size image. And then I format them and, you know, I got to move things around a little bit so that they look right. But um, I do that so that they fit better. If you can do that, where you can resize things so that it fits that full space rather than just being a reshare and, you know, one little square, you know, in the middle of that, um, it's ideal to resize things, but it, it's not going to hurt you either way. I'm curious. I have a couple of theories. I think he said it in his stories. I feel like that would be a big enough update that he would say it in his. That's that's kind of huge. I feel like he's probably got a reel somewhere. So they said, I mean, I only, I have two Etsy stores and one social media account, which I post about both stores. If the audiences are completely different, yeah. I would separate those. You're sending mixed signals, not only to your customers, but also to the algorithms as well. So I would try to separate those. That would be like, you know, I'm, I also have a science fiction book and it'd be really weird if I talked about that on the Alpha <laughs> Instagram because you guys would be like, I don't care. No, they're talking about just choosing the location, like in the actual location of like where it took place underneath. Got choosing, it. Choosing New York, New York. I have a theory about that and mm. I have a, I almost bet because, I mean, and we're not going to get political here. New York is a hot topic right now mm -hmm. and a lot of people are searching specifically for New York. There could also be positive reasons why people are searching New York, but I can almost bet that if you were to pick trendy locations, <laughs> even if something didn't take place in that location, there's a good chance that you would pop up more because people are searching specifically for things in that area, not just that that is a well, good. So maybe let's test that out. Well, let's let's you know what? It's the Friday Bean. We're doing a test of our Instagram reels, and I don't know what else to say. Okay. Are you going to put that on your Instagram? I sure am. Uh, all... Sorry for that face you guys just had to endure me doing. There's nothing cringier than watching someone make a social media post. All right. All 6,722 of my audience are going to get that. It's only eight seconds. Okay. I know the feels. So let's do... All right, write a caption. This is a caption. We are testing something. Glad you guys like that. Dude. Is the Magic Resizer in Canva a good upscaler? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it will recycle it to whatever format you need it to be. So... It's just, it's going to work no matter what. Um, okay. Bean to understand. Okay. So let's do. Oh, you guys like that. Add locations, specifically New York, New York. Yep. NYNY. It New would make York, sense New for York? a location to be an option because you might post an NYC pic from vacation from Ohio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, that's... Got, I got you. I understand. Oh, I look. 
Why do I look drunk in every you single- You look so high in that picture. <laughs> Why? I'm trying to like scroll to find like a good spot to Hashtag put- Hashtag legal now. Oh my God, what? Why can't I find a good spot to, there. Okay, that's good enough. I still look like, oh, I look, I look so weird. Okay. Just post it, good Lord. Okay. Who cares? Okay. Recommend on Facebook. No, I'm just going to turn that off. Yeah, no, don't. we no, we want that. Or you no, know, I don't. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, you don't need that on Facebook. No. Turn off for this reel. <laughs> Not for all reels. Okay. Okay. Publish. We'll see if it does better. I can't wait to see the mean comments I get on that. No, I just want to see how it the compares. Mean comments. Why would you get mean comments? It's because I'm ugly. That's probably what it is. No, I'm just, I just, I'm just curious how much it'll go up. Um, obviously, you guys will go see it. It shouldn't impact my because I my reels already get okay views. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty much all we have time for, and we somehow got through all the questions. I don't actually know how many people are here because this number has been frozen for like forty five minutes. That's fine. Um. We love you guys. Sorry, we were a little uh lower in energy. Oh, there's a mic. You can kind of see it there. <laughs> it's bouncing above our head. <laughs> You are apologizing for That's low it. energy. That's Just it. Low energy. We're sleepy this week. Sleepy, sleepy, pe sleepy peeps. First, she had like her first like kind of ish day off in a long time yesterday. <laughs> like two and a half weeks. Yeah. And the thing is, I had that kind of. I still had to do E rank Q and A. I had that day off, and I felt guilty the whole time. The whole time. She's addicted. I know. I know. I felt I felt like, oh, I should be doing something. So I didn't actually enjoy it. So tomorrow, aside from cleaning the house, I'm going to attempt to take it. House Sunday. I ain't doing nothing tomorrow. I'm going to attempt to take a day off for real. For real, for real. For real, for real. For real, for real. For that real. For that real. Enjoy the real. We'll see how it does. Um, and we'll do another one of these soon. Bye. Wait, should we leave in? Bye. Oh, oh, no, already? That was so fast. I wasn't expecting it to just, like, disappear. Thank you.